the tragedy of the past. Thank you, Mazin and the Kanu. Thank you, my dear brother, Dele. Thank you very much. And also, uh, Mazi, the co um, host of this very wonderful and unique forum. I want to acknowledge those that went before me, our elders, uh, the two people that actually um, have so much regard for, Paya Debanjo, and also our own father, Mazili Kamechi, and also my regards uh, and respect to Bishop Koka and all the rest of them that spoke. The fact of the matter is that we can break the rule without any rancor or need to go to war. We mustn't forget that there was a country called Czechoslovakia. Today, they are the Czech Republic and um, Slovakia. They never fought any war. And for us to properly contextualize this never again theme or scenario, that people are talking about, we must go back to how we were before the white man came. There was no war between Biafran people and the Dudua people before Lugard came. There was no war between Biafran people and, say, the Fulanese from the north. Everybody minded their own business until the white man came and decided otherwise. They said otherwise in such a way that even Igbo land itself is carved up into heaven knows how many states, even some of them in the north, as we speak. My own relatives from a joint land that we never fought any war with decided all of a sudden that we are no longer together or should be one as a people. All of these things are the vestiges of colonialism. And I blame it squarely on the shoulders of those that call themselves the founding fathers of Nigeria. And after them, those of them that call themselves rather laughably the elites. You don't have elitism in a place where there is no running water, no good roads, no good schools. Cattle headers are busy slaughtering and massacring people everywhere. And some people have the temerity to come out on national television or on this forum to say they are the elite. Elite of what and for what? What have they accomplished? Absolutely nothing. So all this vacuous elitism makes me very, very sick. I do not subscribe to it. My main point that I want to raise is um, a brief response to what Tanko Yakasai said a while ago. There seems to be this blame game going on in Nigeria. And as the bishop quite rightly said, it is called, I think in his words, I'm correct, he called it relativism. When a crime is committed by a fulani, there isn't much who heard about it. If some crime is committed by a poor person or by a girlfriend, there seems to be an amplification of the implications of that very crime, regardless of how minuscule or irrelevant it may be in the wider scheme of things. Where am I saying this? But telling me that you are in a country where the Fulanese have consistently been massacring people on a daily basis. First, they called them terrorists, then they were called insurgents, and now they are called bandits. But you and I know that in the main, these are full and headers killing people. Nobody has ever suggested the designation of Mieti Allah as a terrorist group. Absolutely not. You live in, in this sort of, um, um, under this climate, such as the atmosphere of impunity and lies. You witness these things every blessed day. And some people will have the guts or the temerity to talk about one Nigeria. Nigeria that came into existence only 60 years ago. How about the ethnic nationalities that existed before Britain was formed? The thing that we keep missing is this. Nobody has the guts to ever interrogate or challenge the deficiencies within Nigeria. And what do I mean by that? We never actually promulgated no system the constitution in the first place. There is no Nigerian constitution. In other words, the ordinary public in Nigeria has no say in how they are governed. How then do you expect that country to move forward? How do you expect healing and reconciliation? How is that possible? You and I know it's never ever going to be possible. Yakasai and Northern commentators keep having an about the 1960s crew. It was an Igbo crew, which of course is a lie. I would recommend that Elder Tanko Yakasai go back and read Adam Yaga's How Why We Struck one of the people that he mentioned, he wrote a book, Why We Struck. In that very book, it was made explicitly clear that what happened in 
1966 was a revolution. And I make bold to say this, without casting any aspersions on it, getting anybody, only the South can carry out a revolution. Only the South. Because of how the North is structured. Their mindset, the, the, the way they reason, their value system cannot allow them to rise above what I call very primordial religious sentiments to carry out a revolution or a coup against their leaders. What happened in 1966 was a revolution. And in a revolution, there are bound to be casualties. What Yakasai was alluding to is the fact that no Igbo high-ranking politician or army officer was killed in the coup. But the fact of the matter is this. Under Michael Opera, we have the fastest growing economy in the whole of Africa, in the whole of the world, 40% every blessed year. How can you kill such a person? The Savannah of Sokoto, Samad Dubelo, went to Sandhurst in London to go and give a speech in England, to go and give a speech. In that very speech, when he came into the hall, he segregated all the cadets, all the people, actually, the so-called Nigerians at Sandhurst study to become military officers. He said he wanted to address only the North. Only the North. Go and go to your history. They talk about history all the time. But these same elites are the same people that connived and conspired to deny us history in our schools. Because they understand the implications. That was what actually led the likes of Unsoku to say that these type of people should not be at the helm of affairs in Nigeria. I give it to them in the North. The North was going very well. So I'm not the knew what it was doing. The far knew what it was doing. They all loved their people and they were developing at a very good pace, or should I say, rate. But the fact of the matter is that there is nothing called one Nigeria. The sooner we rise up and face this reality better for us, or else our children and our children should just be having these uh, discussions in years to come. And that is not the way to go. In Russia, there was a revolution by the Bolsheviks. In France, there was a revolution. In England, there was a revolution. Cromwell cut off the head of King Charles I. Today, you don't hear the real family saying, oh, people from Cumbria, we are, um, uh, 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 Oliver Cromwell comes from, should be denied access to good education because they rose up against the crown. In America, there was a revolution. In every revolution, people are bound to die. If something happened in NSAS, during the NSAS protest, these same people introduced tribe and religion into it. And falsely claimed that those burning down properties out of anger and rage because of the killings at Togate in Lagos are all Igbo people. The same people talking about one Nigeria to make Nigeria better. How is that possible? When people cannot be honest with themselves. All of you, all of us participating today, we all know that the constitution is flawed. We know that the 1979 constitution, or 19, in fact, from 79 to 99, they are all flawed documents. You and I know that. Yeah, because it's the turn of your village. You want to rotate presidency, you want to start eating as other people, you want to start buying houses in Dubai, in, in the UK, and in America. You say, oh no, it is not in my turn. That is what they are doing. Once you're elected as a senator, as a governor, or whoever you are, you will say to yourself, not in my town. Let me make that money that others have made before proceeding. You stay in a country, you are in a country where Omar Odeko is the most corrupt individual out of Africa. He's a funny man. The families are now enjoying the loot, the money he stole. There was a man called Ibrahim Taher, if you have forgotten. This man burnt Nigel down at Marina after stealing all the money. And we are here pretending that somehow this can be better. It can never, ever be better. There is something called a referendum or a place beside. There okay. must be a constitution formulated by the people, and that is the best way to go. Without it, these discussions will continue forever and ever, and Nigeria will remain as poorly and as deprived as it is today. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mazi. Before you go, please, there is a fundamental question that we want you to address sent in, that have you reduced the entire Fulani to ex-men who kill Southerners? Is it right? Is it fair to reduce all Fulanis to ex-men who kill? I am trying to pay them back in their own coin. Ojuku went to Aburi to negotiate for the same restructuring we are talking about today going back to, to the regions. Every Igbo man in the north, every Biafran in the north, and 
to an extent some some Yorubas as well. We attacked rebels, slaughtered and massacred in the north. What are the foreign leaders doing about this space of insecurity and terrorism in Nigeria? Only the foreign are responsible for ISIS in West Africa, for Boko Haram, for Ansaru, for all the so-called foreign headsmen, for the bandits that you have in the north. You have foreign governors paying foreign people to come to Nigeria to kill. A Fulani governor, I think the one from Bauchi, openly said we want to relocate all the Fulanis in the Sahel back into Nigeria. And we're here talking about one Nigeria safe. We don't have any brain. Do they think we are stupid? We cannot reason very well. We know what the end game is. The more the mouth unity, 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 it is to allow you to lure you into a false sense of security so that the Fulanis across the Sahel can come in to settle. Are uh, you not aware of the speeches that the Kaduna State Governor made at the height of the slaughter of innocent people in southern Kaduna. What did anybody do about it? Absolutely nothing. You did nothing. When they hastily tagged IPOB, a terrorist group, with no evidence, all of you kept quiet. Nobody did anything about it. No. But Miet Yala is busy negotiating the bandits, killing and raping people, and everybody's quiet. That is well, why we no, are different. No, and no, that is no. why we insist that the Polanese are in cahoots as to what is happening in the so They want to take over the entire country and make it the home of Polanese in West Africa. Go and do your research very well, you see it there. And we are not going to allow it. It can't Mazi, Mazi, more northerners are killed today. More northerners suffer more from banditry than the south. So how do you explain that? In fact, now, the cry in the north is that we are insecure. So, which negates this theory of thesis that the Fulanese are killing the rest of Nigeria. Who are the people being killed in the north, if I may ask you, please? Tell them, my dear brother. Who are the people being killed? Where are the killings happening? They are happening in, in the Canyon Bruce, in, in the Canyon we saw in Katsina the other day how many students were abducted. We saw in Bruno the most popular one, the Chibo girls. So the North itself is not as if the North is enjoying peace. It is as a consequence of their own action. They underestimated how, how huge the problem would come in time to come. They fed this little python, they kept feeding it, they kept feeding it, and one day the python turned around and started swallowing all of them. That's what they did. It is a consequence of terrorism. That is what actually happened. Once you spend years and years and years nursing and feeding terrorism, at a time it will come back to consume you. It is a natural consequence. It is a natural order. That is what they are suffering from. The true intent, the reason why they formed all these was to harass Jonathan out of office. That is a known fact. Nobody's trying that. They connived with Obama and all the rest of them. They planned perfectly to say that Jonathan was incapable of handling this situation in Nigeria. So a general has to come in. Tinubu, on his part, promoted that very false narrative. Only a general can save them. Because they we are impervious to all the indices that lead to and sustain terrorism. And today we have it. In Afghanistan, it's the same. Afghan people, they, they, uh, I wouldn't say that the Taliban is a terrorist movement, of course, there's a as such. But look at the Taliban in, 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 in Afghanistan. They started by killing occupying forces. And after a while today, you have um, Afghanis killing fellow Afghans. As a consequence of the climate of terrorism, that is what happens all over the world. What is consuming the North today was what they themselves created. But some of us are too scared to speak the truth. The truth. Who brought terrorism into Nigeria? Let's be honest. El Rufai said it. We are paying bandits in Kaduna to stop killing people. Who brought them in? They did. A governor, a Fulani governor of Bauchi State said, we are seeking to resettle Fulani City. Are we deaf and dumb and so stupid we cannot reason properly? We are here talking about the niceties of constitutional change and reform and all the rest of it. They are not willing to do it. They understand the implications. Once you regionalize the governance of Nigeria, they understand that their stranglehold on the resources from my land that sustains that very contraption called Nigeria 
do slip away from their hands and they do not want it. My anger is reserved for those who are complicit in the mess called Nigeria. They are complicit. Why are they complicit? They know the truth. You and I understand the truth. They have a solution to the problem. And somebody is telling us, oh, we the elites, we need to agree. Who are you? What elitism are you? From where? Who are you? It is the masses, the population that determines. It is called the Republic for a reason. It belongs to the people. The people will rise and determine what, how they should be governed. Not a few who spent forces somewhere in Abuja discussing the fate of millions upon millions of people. I am a Democrat at heart. And I want, if it is possible, if had Nigeria been good, do you think I'd be agitating? These people, they buy houses in Dubai, they buy houses in England, is the man, people talk about presidency, regional presidency rotation, is the prime minister of England from, from East Secretary. Is the prime minister of England, is he a Uruguay man? But you prefer to buy houses in England. You go to Dubai, is uh, uh, the crown prince of Dubai or whoever is living in Dubai, are they from your village? Are they from your village? That you will prefer, you will prefer to go and buy houses in Dubai than to buy a house, let's say in Bauchi, that you are in Nigeria. Mazi, thank you so much for thank your contribution to the Opa. Maybe you and I would have a direct conversation again very soon, if I you are free, and then, yes, we, we, we can continue. Thank you so much. Uh, for thank, the, you. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, uh, thank you.